What's up, Captains and Cadets? Hey, I have some footage here of the upcoming Starbase game, and I thought I could do a little bit of a walkthrough. The footage was provided by the guys from the Atlas Brew this afternoon as I'm making this video. So let's check it out. Let's get into it. Let's go. So what's up, Muds? What's up, Bonies? And what is up, Boosters? Yeah, so the Atlas Brew this afternoon had a little bit of a demo of the upcoming Starbase game. It might already be out by the time you're even watching this video. Um, but I actually grabbed the footage and I kind of did my own narration over it, just kind of consolidated it a little bit. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy. If you want to watch the entire Atlas Brew, you can rewatch it on Star Atlas TV. It's reposted there on YouTube. Um, it was really a great episode. Dominic Vane was be behind the helm. He was actually controlling the whole entire Starbase while Josea and Santi were kind of doing some narration over it, kind of giving an explanation about how the game, you know, kind of all works. So here is my little bit more shorter, concise version of it. I hope you enjoy. I might not be able to play Starbase right away, so that's the reason I'm making this video. I have a massive snowstorm coming to New England, and I am a plow guy and have to plow snow. So a front end loader is going to be my starship for the next two to three days, possibly. So hopefully you guys enjoy. All right, so the very first thing that you are looking at right here is the actual UI, the main map of Starbase. And this is up in the Oni region. Dominic Vane is actually at the helm here and he is controlling his Oni fleet. And the first thing that the guys from the Atlas Brew wanted to show was up in the right hand corner, there is something called XP, which is our licenses. and these will be used in the future. They're not going to be utilized right away, but they thought that this was a really interesting feature that wasn't talked about a lot. Let's see, Dominic will bring down this tab, if you can see right up here. And there you will see, um, you could level up mining, crafting, pilot, and data running. So depending on what you are doing within the game, you will kind of silently behind the scenes be leveling up those four licenses. So um, I believe piloting will be actually traveling between star bases. Mining obviously will be when you are mining at a star base. Crafting is when you are upgrading at the star base or crafting whatever you are mining. And data running will be out there like when you're scanning for SDUs. Now the other thing that you will notice at the top is your LP. Now LP is the actual extremely useful thing that you will be utilizing within the game. And that's what you will be trading in for Atlas tokens. So as you are upgrading and helping um, craft and maintain each starbase, you will be gaining LP and the amount of LP that you, are, you will be gaining as you play the game will be located up there in that upper right hand corner. So you can actually get a visualize of how much um, progress you're actually making and how much possible Atlas you might have in the future. And Dominic clicks on the CSS and you can see right here, he has one of his ships uh, or fleets, I should say, within the CSS. And you can warp or subwarp just like you would normally in the old um, Sage Labs version of the game. Not much changed right there. Then in the upper right hand corner, there's also two little tabs. And one is Show Overview and the other is Show All Fleets. He toggles on the Show Overview and you can see a couple different tabs there that you can actually play with. Crafting Process and um, Section Survey. Now when Dominic clicks on the Oni CSS here in a second, you will see highlighted options on the bottom left hand side the options are operations port of entry hangar lp exchange and details so dominic ends up clicking on the hangar tab on the left and then you can see that that this is very similar to what we would have in the previous sage labs game he can add fleets and create um, any type of fleet that he wants depending on what type of ships that he has um, to utilize and so he has a Busan Maiden Heart and he creates a fleet called the Roundhog Fleet, I believe. So the fleet is created and just like we did in Sage Labs, he adds some fuel, he adds some ammo. All right, and then next Dominic adds some toolkits and some framework to his cargo bay. So he can upgrade one of the star bases here in just a few minutes, you will see. All 
All right, and next he's going to warp over to the Oni 5 Starbase so he can actually do some upgrading on it. And while that ship is warping, let's take a look at that top left, lower left tab called Operations. Now we are on the, I believe this is the Oni 4 Starbase, just for an example, and it shows the different options that we can do to help Oni 4 either upgrade or upkeep. So now you can see that Oni 4 needs both food and toolkits for its upkeep and its maintenance. Now, if you do not have food, you cannot craft. And if you do not have toolkits in on a Starbase, you cannot upgrade the Starbase. So you need to constantly supply the Starbase with both food and toolkits. You can kind of think of that as the food to keep all the crew going and the toolkits for them to actually, um, the supplies basically for them to actually work on the Starbase, if you think of it like that. On the lower part is the actual upgrading uh, materials that you will need. You can see that you need a ton of resources in order to upgrade a Starbase. Now this is a tier one Starbase and these would be the materials that you would need. You can see power source, you can see SDUs and multiple other things, electromagnets. At the very top, you, you can see two other tabs and that would be craft workshop and staff efforts. And we will go over those in just a few seconds. All right, so the Groundhog fleet has almost made it to only five. Now only five has already a decent amount of food upgraded in the Starbase, but you can see that it desperately needs toolkits. So the first thing that Dominic's going to do is he's going to upgrade the Starbase with some toolkits that he brought in his cargo bay. The next thing he wants to do is he wants to upgrade the Starbase. So he's going to add the frameworks to be crafted onto the Starbase. And this will give him LP that we'll talk about in just a second. But he's going to upgrade the Starbase with the frameworks that he brought. In order to do this, though, he needs to disband his fleet. Now, the reason that you have to do that is you need crafters. And while your crew is inside your ship, they cannot craft. So he has to disband his fleet and then he can upgrade the Starbase with those frameworks that he has used or that he has brought, I should say. And then at the very top, he can click on the craft workshop or the staff efforts to actually see his crew crafting. Let's go to LP. Now, if you hit that lower left LP exchange tab, this panel will pop up right here and you will have a 24 hour epoch to cash in your LP, the LP that you had, you know, you accrued within that day for whatever you were doing, helping upgrade one of the star bases or helping maintain one of the star bases. You can see right at the top that this epoch, which is, like I said, a 24 hour expanse is about to end in a little over six hours. So now if Dominic wants to cash in that LP, he doesn't have to, but he can make that decision right from this panel right here. You can see he just hit the max button. That's his total amount of LP that he actually holds right now. He can cash in just a part of it or he can cash it all in. Now, this might be something you might want to think about. You might want to wait for a certain day to cash in your LP, maybe a day that not a lot of people are all cashing in their LP. And the reason is that each faction per epoch will have to share 1,500,000 Atlas tokens. And if a lot of people are cashing in a lot of LP, maybe there's some whales out there, or maybe a Titan owner that's cashing in a ton of his LP that day, maybe you might not get a lot of Atlas tokens. So you might want to wait for a day or so, or an epoch, let's say, before you cash in those LP tokens. You will not be able to trade those LB to LP tokens either on the marketplace. Those are just for you, and you have to decide what you want to do with those things. Now, there is also something that might help you understand and play with the situation of how much Atlas you are going to be able to redeem. And it's at the very top. It's redeemable Atlas claims. And if you click on that tab, which I believe Dominic does here in just a second, here it is. Um, it shows how much Atlas tokens he's going to get per LP that he plans on cashing in. All right, I hope that helped. I hope that gave a little bit of an insight on how the whole entire game works. Thanks again to the Atlas Brew for, uh, you know, posting all this video footage and telling us how it all works. 
Um, if you guys did not have a chance for the Atlas Brew, I hope this helped you out. And I, like I said, I'll be in my front end loader Starship plowing, so I can't wait to see some of that footage of you guys actually out there in, uh, you know, star-based land, <laughs> having your fleets do all sorts of mining and go Ooster, get those uh, star-based crafted up for me. So thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later!